The Galactic Council, a conglomeration of the galaxy's most powerful species, had thrived in relative peace for centuries. The universe was vast, with countless civilizations spread across its stars, each vying for power, knowledge, or dominance in their own way. Among them were races whose technologies were beyond comprehension and species that had long since evolved past biological constraints. They governed with a cold efficiency, ensuring that no one species grew too powerful while maintaining a delicate balance of influence across the galaxy. In this grand scheme, humanity was barely a footnote. The species was young by galactic standards, having only recently achieved space travel and barely beginning to explore the stars beyond their home planet, Earth. While the Council kept an eye on rising civilizations, humanity's progress was of little concern. The prevailing belief among the older species was that humans, with their primitive technologies and chaotic societal structures, posed no threat to the established order. They were seen as reckless, their history full of violent conflicts and short-sighted decisions. Many council members believe that if humanity ever attempted to expand aggressively, it would self-destruct long before it became an issue. Humans were geographically and politically isolated in the far reaches of the galaxy, nestled in an unremarkable arm of the Milky Way. Their presence was hardly worth noting, and few outside their solar system even knew of them. Occasionally, their ships would venture out, but their crude technology and inability to grasp the larger intricacies of intergalactic diplomacy meant they were often ignored or dismissed. Most alien species viewed them as nothing more than a curiosity, barely beyond the Stone Age compared to the giants of the galaxy. This detachment would soon prove to be a grave oversight. It began with a minor territorial dispute between two neighboring alien empires on the edge of human space. What started as a skirmish quickly escalated, threatening the fragile peace in that region. The Galactic Council, in its arrogance, dismissed it as another typical border conflict, one that would resolve itself without intervention. Unbeknownst to them, this conflict would eventually draw in humanity. Among the warring factions were the Thraxians, a race of towering, insected creatures known for their ruthless military campaigns. The Thraxians, while not the most advanced species in the galaxy, had perfected warfare. Their armies moved with precision, overwhelming their enemies with sheer numbers and superior tactics. They had long viewed the galaxy as their hunting ground, conquering weaker species and subjugating them without remorse. When the conflict spread into human territory, the Thraxians saw an opportunity. They had heard whispers of the humans, but only in the most dismissive terms. To them, humanity was just another weak and underdeveloped race that would offer no significant resistance. The Thraxians, eager to expand their empire and demonstrate their superiority, saw Earth as an easy conquest. There was no need for caution, they believed, for no prey had ever challenged them before. The Thraxians viewed humans as nothing more than a lower species, soft, fragile, and technologically primitive. Their biology, while adaptable, was inferior to the Thraxians' hardened exoskeletons and regenerative abilities. The Thraxian generals expected a swift campaign, a simple matter of overwhelming Earth's defenses and adding yet another species to their list of conquests. To them, this was not a war but a hunt, with humanity as the prey. They launched their invasion with characteristic arrogance, sending a fleet to the outer colonies of human space. The initial encounters were entirely in their favor. Human settlements on the frontier, poorly defended and unaware of the scale of the impending threat, fell quickly. The Thraxians broadcast their victories across the galaxy, boasting about their triumph over the insignificant humans. To the rest of the galaxy, it was just another Thraxian conquest, hardly worth noting. But the Thraxians had made a critical error. In their arrogance, they had failed to recognize the resilience of their new enemy. While humanity's technology was indeed inferior, they had something far more dangerous— a fierce survival instinct and an unmatched capacity for adaptation. What the Thraxians saw as weakness would soon become their undoing. Humanity had faced extinction many times before, from natural disasters to self-inflicted wars. Each time, they had survived, emerging stronger and more unified. Now, with an external threat greater than any they had faced before, humanity would do what they had always done. They would fight back, using every resource, 
every tactic, and every ounce of ingenuity at their disposal. The Galactic Council watched from a distance, still unconcerned. To them, the Thraxian invasion was simply another minor galactic event, one that would resolve itself without upsetting the larger balance of power. But they had not accounted for one crucial fact. The Thraxians had provoked the wrong species. The Council would soon learn that the humans, who had been ignored and underestimated for so long, were about to show the galaxy why they were the apex predator no one had seen coming. The initial wave of Thraxian forces descended upon the human colonies with a devastating precision. Their fleet tore through the outer defenses with ease, encountering little resistance as they swiftly overran settlements on the fringes of human space. The aliens, confident in their superior technology and military prowess, saw this as confirmation of their earlier assumptions. Humans, they believed, were nothing more than a minor nuisance, unprepared for the scale of warfare the Thraxians had perfected over centuries. They broadcast their victories across the galaxy, proclaiming humanity's inevitable submission. But as the Thraxians continued their advance, humanity's response began to take shape. The initial shock of the invasion had stunned the human populace, but fear quickly turned to resolve. Behind the scenes, human leadership moved with an efficiency the Thraxians had not anticipated. Military leaders, scientists, and strategists from across the globe convened, pooling their knowledge and resources. While the Thraxians saw their early victories as the beginning of the end for humanity, the humans saw them as the catalyst for something far greater. The first sign of resistance came in the form of guerrilla tactics. Human forces, unable to match the Thraxians in direct combat, began launching hit-and-run attacks on supply lines and isolated patrols. Small groups of soldiers, often outnumbered and outgunned, used the terrain to their advantage, striking swiftly and disappearing before the Thraxians could mount a counterattack. These tactics baffled the invaders, who were accustomed to more straightforward battles. The Thraxians had never faced an enemy that fought with such unpredictability and resourcefulness. Human adaptability quickly became evident. Rather than rely on outdated strategies, human commanders began to exploit the weaknesses in the Thraxian battle formations. They employed cyber warfare on a scale the aliens had never encountered, hacking into communication networks and disrupting their command structure. Entire Thraxian battalions found themselves isolated, cut off from reinforcements, and vulnerable to ambushes. The precision and speed with which humanity learned to counter the Thraxian tactics left the aliens reeling. Every battle they fought against the humans seemed to yield new lessons, and with each lesson, the humans grew more dangerous. Technological improvisation played a crucial role in this sudden shift. While the Thraxians relied on their advanced weaponry, humanity turned to innovation. Engineers and scientists worked tirelessly to modify existing technologies, turning outdated ballistic weapons into formidable tools of destruction. They enhanced their defenses, creating energy shields and EMP devices capable of disabling Thraxian systems. In one battle after another, the Thraxians found themselves outmaneuvered by what they had once considered primitive human technology. One of the most significant innovations came from human ground forces, who repurposed their own vehicles and weapons to devastating effect. Tanks, artillery, and drones were retrofitted with new technologies, allowing them to punch through Thraxian armor and defenses. Even small arms were modified to penetrate the thick exoskeletons of the Thraxian warriors. What had once been seen as inferior human weaponry was now wreaking havoc on the battlefield, forcing the Thraxians to reconsider their tactics. But it wasn't just technological advancements that unsettled the Thraxians. Humanity's psychological warfare had a profound effect on the invaders. Propaganda campaigns spread misinformation through Thraxian ranks causing confusion and paranoia. Sabotage missions targeted key infrastructure, leaving the invaders scrambling to maintain control over their occupied territories. False reports of human victories and Thraxian defeats were broadcasted across enemy communications, sowing doubt among their forces. The Thraxians, who had entered the conflict with unwavering confidence, now found themselves questioning the very foundation of their strategy. As the humans intensified their psychological assault, the cracks in the Thraxian war machine began to show. Soldiers became increasingly demoralized, 
unsure of whether the intelligence they received was reliable. Officers hesitated to issue orders, fearing that they were being manipulated by human counterintelligence efforts. The once unified Thraxian forces began to fragment, with some commanders acting independently in an attempt to salvage their dwindling control. Human ingenuity wasn't limited to the battlefield. Back on Earth, the human population rallied behind the war effort, uniting in a way that had not been seen for generations. Civilians contributed to the fight in whatever ways they could, from manufacturing weapons to gathering intelligence. The human spirit, resilient and unyielding, became a force in itself, driving the war effort forward. What the Thraxians had perceived as a fractured, chaotic society revealed itself to be one of humanity's greatest strengths, their ability to come together in times of crisis. The turning point came when humanity launched its first major counteroffensive. Using the Thraxians' own arrogance against them, human forces staged a feigned retreat, luring the invaders into a series of carefully laid traps. Entire divisions of Thraxian forces were decimated as they advanced into what they thought was a vulnerable human position. Instead, they found themselves caught in a crossfire, with human forces emerging from hidden positions to deliver a devastating blow. The Thraxians, for the first time, faced a coordinated and overwhelming defeat at the hands of the humans. What had started as a seemingly easy conquest for the Thraxians had turned into a nightmare. They had underestimated humanity's capacity for adaptation, their willingness to fight, and their ability to turn the tide of war in their favor. The humans had not just survived the invasion, they had thrived under the pressure, using every setback as a lesson and every victory as a stepping stone toward total resistance. The Thraxians, once confident in their superiority, now realized that they were dealing with a far more dangerous foe than they had ever imagined. Humanity, with its relentless drive and unparalleled ability to learn and innovate, was not just a prey species. They were predators, and the Thraxians had made the fatal mistake of underestimating their potential. As the war raged on, the galaxy began to take notice. What had started as an invasion was now becoming a war of survival for the Thraxians, and humanity was proving to be a far greater threat than anyone had anticipated. The Thraxians' arrogance had been shattered. What began as a confident campaign had quickly devolved into a desperate fight for survival. The humans, who had once been seen as nothing more than easy prey, were now the predators. Thraxian fleets that had once swept through human space uncontested were now finding themselves relentlessly pursued, outmaneuvered, and annihilated. Human forces, having learned from every battle, were no longer content to defend their home. They had taken the fight to the Thraxians' doorstep. The shift in tactics was brutal and efficient. Human commanders launched a series of coordinated strikes against the Thraxian home worlds and key military installations. Their ability to infiltrate the Thraxian communication networks, once used for psychological warfare, was now turned into a weapon of mass confusion. Supply lines were severed, leaving Thraxian forces stranded and starving. Military convoys were ambushed before they could reinforce weakened positions. Their once invincible fleets were crippled by human cyber attacks that disabled ships mid battle, leaving them helpless against human assaults. What terrified the Thraxians most was humanity's relentless pursuit of victory. They had underestimated the human capacity for survival and adaptation. Now they faced something far more dangerous a species that had fully embraced its role as a hunter. The humans hunted Thraxian ships through space, striking with precision and brutality. Every Thraxian loss was followed by another, and soon, they began to understand what it meant to be prey. Human forces operated with a level of ruthlessness that shocked the galaxy. There was no hesitation, no mercy. Every Thraxian retreat was cut off, every attempt at regrouping crushed before it could gather momentum. Thraxian commanders who had once looked down on humanity as primitive now faced the full weight of their error. The humans were not content with a simple victory. They wanted complete and total dominance, and they were willing to do whatever it took to achieve it. The psychological impact on the Thraxians was devastating. The humans, who had once fought defensively, were now on the offensive, and the Thraxians could do little to stop them. Reports of human fleets appearing out of nowhere, striking at vulnerable positions, 
and vanishing just as quickly spread fear through Thraxian ranks. Entire battalions surrendered without a fight, terrified of what would happen if they resisted. The Thraxians, who had once been the galaxy's apex predators, were now hunted, cornered, and systematically dismantled. As the Thraxian Empire crumbled, the rest of the galaxy watched in stunned silence. Alien species that had once dismissed humanity as a minor player now began to realize the gravity of the situation. Humanity had proven itself to be far more dangerous than anyone had anticipated. Their capacity to learn, adapt, and conquer was unlike anything the galaxy had seen before. The Galactic Council, once unconcerned with human affairs, now held emergency meetings to discuss the growing threat. For many alien empires, the question was no longer whether to intervene in the conflict but how to avoid becoming the next target. Some began to reach out to humanity, offering tentative alliances in the hope of avoiding their wrath. Others, more cautious, chose to distance themselves from the Thraxians entirely, not wanting to be associated with the losing side. The galaxy was beginning to fracture, and at the center of it all was humanity, a species that had gone from an afterthought to the most feared force in the universe. One of humanity's greatest strengths had always been its ability to innovate. As they dismantled the Thraxian war machine, human engineers and scientists began to reverse-engineer the alien technology they encountered. Weapons, ships, and communication systems that had once seemed impossibly advanced were now being integrated into human forces. Humanity's technological leap was astonishing. In a matter of months, they had not only caught up to their alien adversaries, but had surpassed them in several key areas. Thraxian energy weapons, once thought to be indomitable, were now being used by human soldiers. Their starships, once unmatched in speed and firepower, were being refitted with human modifications that made them even more deadly. What had started as a war for survival had become a technological revolution, with humanity emerging as the clear victor. The humans were no longer the underdogs. They were the apex predators, and they had the technology to prove it. The speed at which humanity adapted to and improved upon Thraxian technology left the rest of the galaxy reeling. Alien species that had once considered themselves far superior to humanity were now scrambling to keep up. The humans had taken the best that the galaxy had to offer, improved it, and turned it against those who had underestimated them. It was a display of dominance that left no doubt as to who now ruled the stars. For the Thraxians, there was no escape. Every attempt to regroup, every effort to launch a counterattack was met with swift and brutal retaliation. Human forces pushed deeper into Thraxian space, cutting off any hope of reinforcement or retreat. Thraxian leaders, once proud and arrogant, were now desperate, willing to negotiate terms of surrender that would allow their empire to survive in some diminished form. But humanity was not interested in negotiations. The Thraxians had invaded their space, threatened their survival, and now they would pay the price. The galaxy watched as the Thraxian Empire fell. Planet by planet, system by system, they were conquered, their military crushed, their leaders captured or killed. What had once been a proud and mighty empire was reduced to ruins, its people scattered, and its influence shattered. Humanity, the species that had once been ignored and underestimated, had proven themselves to be the dominant force in the galaxy. The apex predator. But the fall of the Thraxians was only the beginning. The galaxy had changed. Humanity had risen, and there was no going back. Other alien species, once secure in their power, now feared what might come next. They had seen what humanity was capable of, and they knew that the humans would not stop. The question that now hung over the galaxy was simple. Who would be next? In the aftermath of the war, the Galactic Council was left to grapple with the reality of humanity's dominance. Some species sought alliances, hoping to secure their future under human rule. Others plotted in secret, preparing for the day when they might challenge the new order. But for now, one thing was clear. Humanity had proven themselves as the galaxy's apex predator, and there was no force left strong enough to stand in their way. The galaxy belonged to them now. The war had ended, but its impact on the galaxy was far from over. The Thraxians, once a formidable empire, lay in ruins. Their worlds, 
once teeming with life and arrogance, were now hushed under the shadow of their defeat. The galaxy had witnessed something unprecedented, the rise of a species no one had seen coming. Humanity, once dismissed as weak and insignificant, had emerged victorious, standing tall among the great powers of the universe. In the immediate aftermath, the Galactic Council found itself in turmoil. The old powers, who had once believed they controlled the fate of the galaxy, were now scrambling to understand the implications of humanity's triumph. They had watched from the sidelines as the Thraxians fell, assuming that the conflict would burn itself out without threatening the balance of power. Now, they had no choice but to confront the reality of the situation. Humanity was no longer a minor player in galactic affairs. They had become something far more dangerous. An emergency council meeting was called. Representatives from all major species gathered, their discussions clouded by fear and uncertainty. The question on everyone's mind was simple, yet terrifying. What would humanity do next? The Thraxians had been a known threat, their aggression predictable. Humanity, on the other hand, was an unknown quantity. They had fought not just for survival, but for dominance, and they had shown no mercy in achieving it. The council members debated endlessly, some advocating for immediate action, others calling for diplomacy. But while the aliens debated, humanity made its own move. In a surprising gesture, human leaders reached out to the council, not with threats of conquest, but with a proposal. Humanity had no interest in galactic domination. They had fought to defend themselves, to secure their place in the universe, and now that their borders were safe, they sought peace. The offer was simple. Humanity would consolidate its gains, fortify its defenses, and enter into alliances with species willing to cooperate. However, the message behind the offer was unmistakable. Humanity would never allow itself to be underestimated again. For many in the Council, the proposal came as a relief. It meant that humanity had no immediate plans for further expansion, no ambitions to subjugate the galaxy as the Thraxians had once intended. But even as they accepted humanity's terms, the fear remained. Humanity had proven its capability for destruction, and while they now claimed peace, no one doubted that they were fully capable of unleashing their power again if threatened. It was a delicate balance, one that left the other species uneasy but unwilling to provoke the new galactic power. Across the galaxy, reactions to humanity's rise varied. Some species, particularly those who had maintained a neutral stance during the conflict, saw an opportunity for new alliances. They reached out cautiously, hoping to establish trade routes, diplomatic ties, and perhaps secure protection under humanity's growing influence. For these species, humanity represented a chance to align themselves with a rising power and avoid the fate of the Thraxians. Others were less optimistic. For centuries, the galaxy had been governed by a predictable set of rules, with power distributed among a few established empires. Humanity's sudden ascent had shattered that order. Many species feared that the balance of power had shifted too quickly, that humanity's rapid rise would lead to further instability. Whispers of rebellion and resistance circulated among the more paranoid factions, though none dared move against humanity directly. The Thraxians had made that mistake, and the consequences were clear for all to see. As the dust of war settled, reflections from across the galaxy poured in. For those who had once dismissed humanity, regret was a common sentiment. The Thraxians, in their arrogance, had underestimated a species that had thrived on adversity for millennia. They had failed to see the adaptability and resilience that lay beneath humanity's seemingly primitive exterior. And now, the price had been paid in full. Other species took these lessons to heart, understanding that underestimating humanity could lead to their own downfall. There were also those who looked to the future with fear. They had seen what humanity was capable of and knew that they could never predict when or how they might strike again. For all the talk of peace, there was an unspoken understanding that humanity's capacity for violence had not diminished, it had simply been put on hold. The galaxy had no choice but to coexist with this new predator, knowing that at any moment, the balance could tip once more. Humanity's legacy, however, was not one of destruction alone. 
Their rise to power had been fueled not just by brute force, but by intelligence, creativity, and sheer willpower. They had taken the best of what the galaxy had to offer, technological advancements, military strategies, and diplomatic negotiations, and made them their own. What had once been seen as humanity's weakness, their relatively young and inexperienced civilization, had become their greatest strength. They were not bound by tradition or the stagnation that plagued the older empires. Instead, they were free to evolve, to adapt, and to continue rising. Looking toward the future, it was clear that humanity had earned its place at the top of the galactic food chain. They were now seen not just as a powerful force, but as the ultimate predator, capable of rising to any challenge and overcoming any threat. Their victory over the Thraxians was a testament to their tenacity, and their refusal to be conquered had solidified their status as a dominant force. As humanity's influence spread, their legacy would continue to grow. They had proven themselves to be adaptable, relentless, and capable of greatness in the face of overwhelming odds. The galaxy now knew what humanity was truly capable of, and there would be no more dismissive glances or underestimations. Humanity had earned its place at the top, and they would remain there for the foreseeable future. In the end, the message was clear. Humanity was here to stay, and the galaxy would never be the same. The balance of power had shifted, and those who once ruled the stars now had to reckon with a new force, one that had proven itself time and time again. Humanity had become the apex predator, and there was no going back. The galaxy belonged to them now.